So in this video, I'll be covering the last property um, on of water, which is the thermal property of water. In my previous videos, I made a few videos, I talked about the solvent property of water, as you can see here. I talked about um, adhesion and cohesion properties of water, and then I also talked about hydrogen bonding. But if you haven't watched any of these videos, make sure to, to at least check out my video on hydrogen bonding, um, because that's the crucial thing that you need to know, you need to understand this, because, because um, hydrogen bonding in water, if you can understand why it happens, hydrogen bonding is the main reason for why any of these properties are possible. So at least check out that one, make sure you understand it, and then, then watch this video, or any of my other ones. So thermal property of water. So we have a glass of water here, okay? All of these are water molecules. They're arranged and they're doing hydrogen bonding with each other, which I explained in the first video. Hydrogen bonding is a relatively strong bond that can keep these water molecules together, which is why it's liquid, because pretend these were not here, then these molecules would just float away and we'd be gas. So thank God to hydrogen bonds, you can have a liquid water and you can drink that. So what if, I'm, I have a question for you, so what if the sun comes out? What normally happens if there's a warm day and you have a pool, a big pool? Do you notice, this one? Do, have you ever noticed that even though it's extremely warm, the pool temperature doesn't really change? It like remains pretty constant. Some days it'd be really warm and you'd actually go into the pool and you'd be like surprised at how cold it is. And that is, that experience right there, that what, you, what you're noticing is one of the proper thermal properties of water. It's the fact that water takes such a long time to change temperature. No matter how much heat you're putting, it will take so long to change temperature. And the reason, and part re reason for that is because of this hydrogen bonding. The sun, it needs to supply so much more heat to break these hydrogen bonds to change, their to change the temperature of the water than for most other molecules. Because most other molecules don't have this hydrogen bond. And this hydrogen bond causes, the, causes water to need more temperature or more heat to be able to change, to change its temperature. Okay, I hope you understood that. And to actually... And you probably know this, but so what you actually need is a hundred degrees Celsius before water will actually start evaporating or boiling. You know, you need so much heat for before this will start evaporating and losing its water molecules. Say it's hundred degrees. Now these these hydrogen bonds, which I'll show here, will start breaking because the temperature is really high. And once they start breaking, these water molecules will just now they now they'll be gaseous, right? So now they'll leave, and slowly the cup will get empty. And that's what you might might notice if you have a cup outside or a pool. If you if you know a pool somewhere, you'll notice that as summer goes on, by the end of summer, if no one refills the pool, it will just be empty. And that's because high temperatures slowly cause the breaking of these bonds, and they will start leaving. But it's still amazing how long it takes for water to heat up. And loses and lose um, and start to empty up because most molecules that happens at a very low temperature so that's why water is so special because imagine water would start boiling at like 10 degrees Celsius then nothing would be possible on earth you wouldn't be able to drink water because it'd be gassed all the time and you wouldn't and your blood in your body wouldn't be able to be liquid it'd be gaseous which means you none of the reactions in your body can take place so it's so important that water has this high specific heat capacity so what you call this forgot to mention, um, it has a high specific heat capacity. High specific heat just means it takes a lot of temperature before it changes, um, I mean it takes a lot of heat before it changes its temperature. And like I said, that's so important in your body because if your blood were, were, were to be gas so quickly, then none of the reactions would, would be possible. And that's not only important in your body, but important in the whole, in the whole world. Because since most of the earth is water, if, if water was not so, if water didn't have this ability, this high specific heat, then none of the reactions would be able to happen. So this is the one, one example of one of the, one of the thermal heat properties. The other ones are very, very similar. So another one, um, oh yeah, by the way, so if you have methane, methane, I mentioned earlier, you should know for the IB because it's a, it basically has the exact opposite properties of what water has. It is not polar, water is polar, and that's why it can do hydrogen bonding because these 
positive hydrogens. Check out my video on this, by the way, if you want to understand this. Because the hydrogen is positive and it will bind to the negative oxygen. So positive and negative charges attract. Therefore, they bind and form this hydrogen bond. But th that doesn't happen in methane. And if you understand why it doesn't happen, check out that video and I, it, will, it will be clear. But basically, methane can't do hydrogen bonding, which means it's, it doesn't have a high specific heat capacity. So as soon as the sun comes out, or even at negative 161 degrees Celsius, that's extremely low. At this temperature, methane is already a gas. It's already boiling at this temperature, and that's freezing. That just shows that water is really special because being able to still be liquid at such high temperatures is amazing. And that's why um, the Earth is actually possible to exist. So just remember methane. It doesn't have hydrogen bonding, and that means like a low specific heat. It was basically a gas before it like, at such low temperatures. Now, two other properties arise from, from this diagram. So you know water, so first of all, water has a high specific heat. Second of all, water is extremely good coolant. So like think about it, when you go running, right, you get extremely warm and you start sweating. That Everyone knows that. But this is actually, without you knowing it, one of the properties of water, one of the thermal properties of water. Because water takes such a long time, it needs to absorb so much heat before it will evaporate. So because it needs so much heat before it, before it evaporates, then you can think of your body. Your body generates heat, right? Because inside a lot of things are happening. When you're running, you're doing exercise, you're getting warm inside. And all that heat inside your body is now going into breaking these... Because um, your body is so much water, 70% water. So all that heat that is created by exercising in your body will now go into breaking these bonds. Because now it's a high temperature. And when these bonds are broken, these water molecules will leave, they will evaporate, but they will evaporate with the heat that your body put into making the bonds break. That means when they evaporate, they take that heat that your body gave with it, and that cools you down, because now heat was taken out of your body. Okay? So that's, just, that's one of the other properties, and I'll show you here. Water can also act as a coolant, because when we sweat, the water from our body evaporates, and, since it, and then it takes a lot of energy with it, the energy from your body that was used to break those hydrogen bonds and that cools down your body and the last one that i mentioned that or i kind of already mentioned was because water is liquid at, at room to, at room at like range of temperatures a large range of temperatures we know it's liquid from zero to a hundred right that's extremely big because we know the earth ranges about between really cold and really warm but between most temperatures on earth most places are between like negative 20 and then 100 so at most of the temperatures water is liquid and that's really good because then reactions can pretty much happen anywhere on earth so if you can remember these basic this diagram and basically why water is so good in terms of its thermal property by the way if you don't know what thermal means it just means heat it's a science word for heat so it's heat property um if you can remember this then that's great that's all you need to know i cover all the detail that you need to know for the ib so um, nothing else that you should need to research. So just know this and you'll be good. In my next video, I'll go over some, um, as you can see here, some IB questions um, that are relevant to all the things I talked about with water, including hydrogen bonding, thermal property, solvent property, um, uh, cohesion, and adhesion. So if you want some IB questions that I'll explain, just check out my next video.